All right. Oh, oh wait, I don't have an opening. Skip it, you bop, 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 ba dee ba dee ba dee boop. So let's go over the individual cards. I'll start with the double rares, heal triggers first, and I'll go on to the Cray Elementals. I'll go on to the triple rares and then the GRs. Uh, so I've arranged them, not according to uh, nation, but rather according to their abilities. But then I divided it up by nation because I don't want to like just get them into the winds. And so uh, each one has a different ability. This one is... If you discard a grade one or less, these four, if you discard a grade one or less, uh, when you pay this card, like if you discard this heal for uh, its bigger version, the triple rare version that's in the G zone, uh, you can pay the ability. That's what all of these cards have. And then in this case, this one is uh, all of all four of these, which are, there's some stacks. Uh, are if you discard a grade one or less, you can draw a card. So it's basically a drop draw. So Royals, Shadows, and OTT have that skill. Mega Colony has that skill, but sadly I felt that they needed a different one. That's okay. Nubatama, again, I felt that they needed a different one. And Tachikaze, and honestly this one's okay. Like, Tachikaze just didn't have to be terrible because... <laughs> you know, it's, it's just one of those things, like, it just didn't have to do anything special with Tachikaze. It's mostly on the rear guards and offense and anything else. Aqua Force, Bermuda, and uh, Ramblu all have the uh, same ability. Which is a pity, not for, so much for Aqua Force, but for both Bermuda and Ramblu. They really had an opportunity to create something imp interesting, and they did not. That's fine. So I'm going to skip over to this side. Uh, these ones are the ones where they soul blast one when it's discarded. And if the number of face up cards in your damage zone are one or less, it doesn't matter how many cards are in your damage zone. So if they're all flipped over, if they're one or less, you know, flipped over, in other words, if you don't have counter blast two, uh, you can counter charge. So in other words, if you're counter blast one and below, you can counter charge. Link Joker, Nova's, which is a good choice. And Dimensional Police, when they, you know, again, when they pay for the cost of their bigger version, all have this skill. Uh, honestly, this is better than the other uh, Onior, which is a little bit difficult to use, but that's okay. <laughs> you can use them in conjunction. <laughs> Not really. So yeah, those are for those. Then for Angel Feather, which I see why they did that. And uh, Alexia Liberator, which is the Liberator Gold Paladin. Uh, by the way, for, uh, this, you know, you no longer have to run that guy that's like Soul Blast 2, uh, skip them all out, skip them back in. So that's, that's what I'm referring to. Narukami and Kagro also have it. And I think it was necessary on both of them. And then we have Great Nature. Now for these, when this is guarded for the bigger version, you put this card into the soul. And as you might expect... Dark Irregulars, Spike Brothers, and Pale Moon have that skill. So does Genesis. Then the last three, Neonectar, Murakomo, and Gear Chronicle have this skill. Uh, when this card is discarded for the bigger version, uh, from G-Zone, etc., choose a normal unit from your drop zone and put it to the bottom of the deck. So in other words, Murakomo, Neonectar, and Gear Chronicle allow you to take cards that were, say, sniped with a Denial Griffin, were killed by some skill or whatever, or had to be discarded, and put it in the bottom of the deck. Now, this is, makes this card really good. This card is meh, but this card is also kind of really good. The, th the reason why this one's meh is that this isn't as big a problem with Gear Chronicle, because they already have, like, three different ways to put it back in. Uh, another uh, Uluru Time, what's his name? And I think there's a half version, and that's the Zodiac Time Beasts. Anyway, so that's what that is. Drop, draw, grade one or less. 
goes, uh, take a normal unit from the drop zone, put it in the bottom of the deck, into soul, and uh, counter uh, charge for soul blast one, provided you have less one counter blast or yield less available to you. All right. There's not much else I can really say about these uh, cards. Like, that's, that's what they do, you know. Uh, I think, honestly, I think these are, like, the best ones. And not because it's like, oh, wow, this skill is so good. But rather just because it works best with it. Like, these, there's other ways to get them into the deck. But honestly, this is allows you to use your um, resources much more efficiently. Especially in the case of Dark Irregulars and Pale Moon. Since you in Pale Moon, they've added some Soul Blasting mechanics. And in Dark Irregulars, um, they uh, just always need the soul. Like, if you use it with Sullivan, uh, that helps you get soul back in. You know, that sort of thing. Let's talk about the Cray Elementals real quick. We have one G-Guard and two uh, Strides. The first one is Heat Ma uh, Element Marindol. And his skill is Act Vanguard. Once per turn, choose a face down, put it face up. Until the end of turn, this unit gets, when this unit attack hits a Vanguard, choose one of your rearguards, and it gets plus 5k for every face up. G-Zone until the end of turn. This clan is all nations. All clans, all nations. So, this is kind of meh. It's good late game, but the problem is he's an on hit. If he was like Negro Songer and did it on purpose, uh, it, on automatic or whatever, main phase, whacked, uh, whatever, uh, it would be better. But he isn't, and so that's how it is. Snow Element, Volancher. This guy's a little bit crazier. Uh, act, Vanguard, once returned, Cannibalist 1. If you have a hard card of 10k or less, draw a card, and this unit gets plus 5k. So this is a better... Um... Oh dear. There's another one that requires 10k, and you can return a grade 3 from your drop zone into your hand. That's what he does. And this is a slightly better version of it, especially since he lets you draw a card and get plus 5k for 30k. Which you might not think is like, oh, this, but like, think about it. 6k booster. Um, also, auto vanguard. When this unit attack hits a vanguard, if you have a hard card with 10k or greater, choose a heal from the drop zone and return it to hand. That also is a pretty good skill. Like, if you have to run a 10k, you might as well run Volancher. Finally, Air Element. It's Water Element. Mel Medev? Mel I don't know. Uh, Air Element, Rectome. Rectome? Mm. Auto, choose a card from your hand, discard it. When this unit is placed on G, pay the cost if you do draw a card. Basically, this is a different way to play uh, a Gleam. I think a Gleam lets you draw a card first. Uh, before uh, you discard, I think. Um, but other than that, this is pretty much the same thing except the opposite, which you might say is worse or better. But the thing is, is that like it's the same skill except you choose the order. If you're fine with whatever the fuck is on top of your deck and you really need a Nagleem like skill, just play this card. Don't play however much for a Nagleem. Just get this. Draw, discard the card, discard the draw, discard the grade 3 you don't need, and draw a card. That's the sort of thing I'm talking about. Now, if you draw back a grade 3, well, look at it this way. At the very least, you're getting a grade 3 from the top of your deck, and that isn't a heal. Alright, so let's talk about triple rares. Now, the triple rares are a little bit different. They all, they have, some of them have their own skills, some of them have, like, copies of skills. Uh, I'll just go over them all my clan as as much as it pains me to do so it doesn't really pain me i actually enjoy this part of the game <laughs> there we go Burp. Uh, let's start off with my favorite oh no let's work up to my favorite uh so starting out black sarath ella Ale, 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 well, I don't know. I don't know. Aleth. Leleth. I don't know. Auto, GB1. By the way, all of them have GB1. It is not enough for them to be in the Guardian Circle. There must be one face-up card already in the G-Zone before it can be played. So anyway, choose a face down, Soul Blast 1, choose a face down G Guardian from the G zone, turn it face up. When this unit is placed on G, pay the cost, it gets plus 5k for every face up card in your damage zone. Now, let's say that it's a pretty late game, where are they? Uh, and you 
you know, you've used all your counter blasts because you know you you're bad at rescue. This saves you, makes it so that it's 10k. Uh, yeah. So yeah, you use you can use this skill for before you use her. You have to use her skill, so you can get plus 10k for every face up. It's pretty nice. Honestly, this is worth playing, but the G zone for uh, uh, angels is pretty intense. Uh, oh, by the way, I got five of her for some reason. I'm okay with that. The Genesis is Lawyer. Choose a face on Guardian, GB1. Uh, when this is placed on G, pay the cost. Choose two or more up to a total of three normal units. So two to three normal units of the same grade from the drop zone or soul and return them to deck. And this unit gets plus 5k for every card return shuffle deck. So basically you're letting yourself remove, you know, like dilute your triggers for 15k ish which honestly isn't bad this is a playable card um however the other g guardians like hanasuke isn't better than her but the other one iris uh iris is slightly better because it's soul charge three from the drop zone so it's like one of those things you want to run a combination of her hanasuke and iris uh just because you know that's how it works also, the G zone is a little bit forgiving for her. Uh, I don't think I'll rank these, honestly. Uh, just because they, they all have their own skills that work within the clan. Uh, auto GB1. I will point out ones that I just would not play, though. GB1. Choose a face on Guardian, turn a face up. When this unit is placed on G, if there's a rear guard in the front row, you may pay the cost. If you do, this unit gets plus 10k until end of battle. Now, this is kind of like what I was talking about. This is kind of like, eh. But at the same time, it's better than holy shine but it's about the same as the guy who requires two uh grade twos in the front row at all time so it's one of those things it's like eh, and you have to pay a g guardian for it so i don't know if you want to pay it like you can pay it for this you pay it for this because this could be up to plus 25k i, sh I should say you know i, I should have pointed that out this is plus 25k this is plus 15 this is just plus 10 there's at least there's one G-Guard that does less, and all the other ones do equal to it or better. Uh, like Ultimiles one, especially. So, you know. So this one's a little bit more interesting. Uh, this is the Gold Paladin one, Elise. Uh, auto, GB1, Kana Bless 1, she's a face down, face up. When this unit is placed on Guardian Circle, pay the cost. Look at two cards from the top of the deck. Call one to G. And until end of battle, if this unit, uh, if the attack does not hit, move it to R. And choose a card from among them on the bottom of the deck. So, Counterblast 1, flip over. Top 2, choose 1, put it on here. If you guard successfully, you can put it on a rear guard. So, let's say that new perf, huh? You put it up here. It doesn't hit. Slide it back down. It becomes a 15k guard later. Uh, if you have the new G2 Gurguit. I mean, G3 Gurguit, you know. Just pointing that out there. Then we have Laws is Magus. Fine. <laughs> Uh, auto, GB1. Counterblast 1, she's a face down, face up. Uh, when this is placed on G, pay the cost. If you do look at top two, put one in the hand, one in the bottom of the deck. It's just fine. It, it does its job. It is an OTT one, and honestly, I don't know if I have the space for it. The problem is, is that it's good, but I've also got Amaterasu that lets me look at the top card of the deck. The only thing is, this doesn't burn as much deck for it. So it's like, it's one of those things, it's like, you know, sort of thing. It's like, you don't really know what to do. Uh, honestly, though, this isn't the worst card ever. I just wish it gave you more protection, uh, which is what Amaterasu gives you. But this gives you direct hand for a counter blast, which, uh, let me just take a look at its G uh, heal again. Just because... Like it doesn't it doesn't flip over counter blasts. Like this card would be pretty good if they synergized in that way, but this is just a drop draw, which honestly just isn't you know, it, it's 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 just not worth the combo. Like I'd rather just play the card with the art I like and then Amaterasu than you know this. And that's the long and short of it. Uh, oh, wait, I almost forgot. Shadow Paladin. She's a face down, face up. Uh, when this is placed on Guardian Circle, pay the cost. If you do choose two of your grade one or less rear guards, move them to G. If you move two cards, draw a card. Now, a lot of people hate on this card, and I know why. It's basically a worse, well, I mean, it's a more intensive, uh, what's his name? Uh, the first G guard they got. But the thing is, he le she, she lets you draw two cards. 
and that's good. Like, first off, she helps you get uh, ritual incredibly quickly. So in other words, like, you might be like, yeah, but I'm doing this, you know. Yeah, but then you play the Luard card. Like, the, the Luard strike. Like, that's how she moves in conjunction with. Also, the fact that she lets you draw two just makes you more unkillable as Luard. It gives you a perfect shield and a fodder. That's what you're paying for. And plus, you don't leave the, the um, guards, you're still within the guard step too. So let's say you, you draw two 10k shields, or another G-guard, or, or something ridiculous like that. You just keep going. Like, it, it's, it's, you just keep guarding from it. And then you run Luard and other cards that send stuff back into the deck. Because Luard's cheap as shit for his abilities, and uh, you just keep going. That's how you play her. I think that she is going to be one of the most underrated cards of the set, uh, simply because people don't like the fact that you have to pay two for things. Well, guess what? There's like two cards in uh, Shadow Paladins that just wipe the field, your field. Uh, I think Ogma and um, three, Vert, Ogma, and because you retire your own cards for every ability. That you need. Anyway, uh, and uh, now this one. Uh, sorry, no, and Dark Distress. Now, Dark Distress people don't like, but I think he was just a testing ground for Ogma. So, just to make sure it wasn't too OP. <laughs> and he isn't. <laughs> he, 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 I like him, but he just is an OP. Dragon Empire. Stealth Fiend uh, Zashiki Hime. Zashiki Hime. I like her, and I like her art. Uh, auto, GB1. She's a face-down, face-up. When this unit is placed on G, pay the cost. The opponent may discard a card from hand. If they do not discard, this gets plus 20k. Now, you might be like, oh, well, they'll always just choose what's best for them. But the thing is, is that that's still a card from hand that they lost. Every player, uh, based on how the game works, gains three cards a turn during stride phase. Assuming ideal situation. The reason why Luard's so good is that he gets a stealth plus one every time he strides for free. That's the that's the benefit of striding for free. So when this card happens, it turns that three down to a two. Assuming no draws, no other skills. You know, let's, let's, you know, let's be real. Uh, let's let's not be stupid about this. You know, no draws, no nothing. Three cards. That's why striding with three grade ones is so dangerous for some players, because they might not be able to make that up by their side abilities. So if I attack and I'm doing some big skill and I lose a card, that's defense I won't have. That means that I can you can kill me easier with domination and Shiranui plain vanilla. You know, those are dangerous combinations now. More dangerous thanks to her, especially in the late game when your stuff gets really powerful. This is one of the best G-guards in this set. Hands down. And you might be like, yeah, but it's just 20k. And like, Dimensional Police will still break through. Okay, fine. Dimensional Police will still break through. That's what they do. <laughs> that doesn't change it. Like, Shadow Paladins. Sure, all these different skills. But with, like... Say they do something where you can only G-guard against, like, yeah, against, um, what's his name? Diablo. You know, that, uh, BBDDDDD. Uh, all of a sudden this becomes more deadly. All of a sudden they can't recover from their skills more. Like, I cannot sing this card's praises enough. Plus 20k is fine. The real skill is the discard. If they choose to do it. And by the way, if they don't choose to do it, okay. This plus 20k against most generic uh, strides will push you over what you needed to guard for or make it a three pass. Uh, for like, say, uh, BBD, D, 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 it's a three, it's a two pass. You know, and then the intercept or something like that for a three or four. Uh, and, you know, that's that's what that's what you're fighting for. You know, like this, this is what you want. Anyway. Uh, this is the Narukami one, Impede Dragon. Uh, choose a GB1, choose a face down, face up. When this unit is placed on G, pay the cost if you do the number of chooses. Opponent chooses a rear guard and retires it, binds it face up. If the number of rear guards is less than your opponent's rear... If the number of your rear guards are less than your opponent's rear guards by two or more, your opponent chooses one of his 
his or her rear guard's run tires in. So let's say that you're doing bad, and because you don't have hand advantage for shit in Narukami, you know, your opponent's kind of eating your lunch on the rear guard front. Like, let's say they're playing Novas or, or they're playing, like, Gold Paladins or something like that. Keeping a small field is no longer detrimental to you. Most uh, uh, Narukami's players I've seen, like, unless they are able to get the special uh, um, ones that keep binding from the drop zone whenever you retire, Chain Bolt Dragoon, uh, you know, you're going to just have a front row. So you might as well do it. So you look at it. They have a full field. You take them down by one. You only have, t you know, a couple rear guards. Two rear guards. You just keep going. Uh, killing two is nice. Binding one face up is even better. Uh, and it is not, by the way, this isn't Thunderstrike. Okay. Uh, your opponent has to choose it. So here's the thing what you want to do. If you, if you, if you play this card, do not choose a unit on your front row. Do not choose your attacking unit because they'll just wipe out the front row. Choose a back row unit of the person who already attacked. Uh, yeah, because this isn't restricted by Vanguard or anything like that. This is this is a really good card to play. Not one of the best. I still think like this one's one of the better ones, but this is still a really good card and can shut down entire front rows if your opponent is stupid. If he chooses his own card to retire and he should still have like two or more cards above you, just choose his other attacker. It's the battle phase. He can't replace it. Kagero. Uh Advanced Guard Dragon. This is this is okay. Auto GB1. Soul last one. She's a face down, face up. When the team is placed on GP, the cost of you do choose an opponent's grade one or less rear guard and retire it. This will see you play an Overlord. I think it is better in Overlord than it is than Denial Griffin. However, it is restricted only to tapped rear guard and the back row, essentially, grade one or less. Now keep in mind if they attack you with a grade one in the front row, you could just start laughing. But um Like it's one of those things. Denial Griffin's good, but I think in Overlord this will see more play. Like, I think this is this is designed for Overlord decks. Uh, but it's okay. It's just okay. The fact that it's grade one or less is, is pretty good, so you can snipe an annoying starter, that sort of thing. Uh, Bullish Primer, this is Tachikaze. And, again, it's not sp fancy. Like, Tachikaze doesn't need fancy defense. Uh, auto, GB1, choose to face down, face up. When this game is placed on G, pay the cost if you do plus 5k for every one of your open regard circles. Guess what? <laughs> the defense on this guy is choice. I really do like him. Uh, however, he is kind of weak. And thus, people might say, well, he's underwhelming compared to Ganga. But, again, you run just one of him. In, a, like, the Tachis, Tachikaze G-Zone has one good card. Dogma. Dynast is okay. Uh, so, after you Dogma, if you didn't just call everything back like a piece of shit player because you do that tachi players uh and honestly it's not a piece of shit it's a legitimate strategy like he is good if you can't call it back or if your opponent does something and he wipes your field as you're doing things like you know there's a bunch of different things that you can do to defend yourself and he helps you quite a bit benefit from a bad play and that's what he is he is a bad play saver Oh, I only have three of these? Huh. Anyway, Shira got, uh, Shiri ha Hagino, Murakomo, auto GB1, choose a face on face up. When she was placed on G, choose one of your vanguards to lend her negates. When your grade three or less units retire from G, you can return it to the bottom of the deck until end of turn, by the way, and this unit gets plus 10k shield. So I would actually, and this may sound funny to you, I do it early. And then all your guard just send it to the bottom of the deck for the rest of the turn. If you know you're going to perf the vanguard, this doesn't require, does it require attack from the vanguard? No, it does not. When it's used place on guardian circle, pay it, play it, pay it, and then basically guard without hurting your deck too much. Like that's, that's how it is. Uh, grade three or losses. Yeah, honestly, these, these are okay. I don't think it's, uh, like, I think this was a really strong card. This one's really strong. Like, all these are pretty good. Like, all the triple rares, I think, are pretty good uh, in this one. But I don't think they were as good. Like, the real problem is, like, this. Like, cards like that. And the fact that they don't synergize too well. Like, let me just, let me just point out synergy real quick. Like, these kind of didn't have as strong a synergy as these ones did. 
Let's take a look. Drop draw. Drop draw. Uh, bottom of the deck. So, yeah, you can just keep putting things at the bottom of the deck. This is good synergy. Counter charge. Counter charge. So, in other words, let's just take a look real quick. There's a little bit of hurt because this is also a soul blast. And Kagero doesn't really do soul blast too well. But the rest of these, these are pretty okay. Like, this guy doesn't really care. This doesn't give a shit. It doesn't affect him. Does he kind of wish he put stuff at the bottom of the deck? Not really, because that inf interferes with triggers. This, it's okay. It's what it needs to be. And honestly, it works together. But it could have been the uh, counter charger. And this is, uh, which could have been a counter charger. But honestly, this deck uses so much counter blast, it's okay. Uh, and this is, this is what it needs to be. You know? The fact that it lets you drop draw... Uh, you know, really helps you do work, I think, just in general for the guard, because you don't need your draws as much. So let's talk about, yeah, I got these guys in hand, uh, Stargate. I have three Lucy, uh, Lacus Carinas. Counterblast one, she's face down, face up. When this unit is placed on GP, the cost of you choose three rear guards, lock them, and your opponent locks his or unit back. Choose up to three and lock them. Choose one of your units in the back row for each unit that was each card that was locked. So the benefits of this skill is that sh she can really screw over Bermuda, anything that uses its um, uh, Amber clone, as well as quite a few other things like Spike Brothers and. Um, Le uh, Shadow Paladins, uh, also Grand Blue. Anything that requires a lot of attacks and special back row units, this screws over. Uh, and there's, by the way, there's no good reason not to just lock everything. Like, as a, I'm not a Messiah player, but I know for a fact that if you lock everything and then it's still locked by the time you're doing, those are just plays waiting to happen with Excelix, with Amnesty, with Transcells. See where I'm going with this. Uh, is there synergy with the, with this one? Uh, yeah, I think there is. Like, if you're low on counter blasts, yeah, there's, there's synergy with it. And, yeah. Mm -hmm. Then, Nova Grappler. Uh, face down, face up. When it's used, place on G, pay the cost. Choose one of your vanguards until end of turn. Uh, it gets into battle that this unit attack if it did not hit, uh, counter charge one. I don't. I don't really f feel like that one did too much, but the fact that you can counter charge two on this skill is pretty good. However, this guy doesn't require this guy, so, you know. But, you know, going from like zero counter blast to two counter blasts, that'll let you get off Bustard, uh, which ain't bad at all. Or, or Victor, or the new Victor. I keep forgetting that the new Victor is a thing that will end games for you. Uh, so, you know, you know, there's there's things you can do for it. You know, good things. These these two work together actually, very good synergy. But by itself, man, it's still good though. I don't know why I'm saying it like that. She's one of the one on the turn. The end of battle is using an attack did not hit. Oh, until end of turn. So it's like the uh, Murakomo one. So you can just keep doing it, keep guarding, unflip damage, unflip damage, unflip damage. Pay this for it. You know, unflip two damage, and then you keep on flipping damage. There we go. There we go. Okay, I get it now. This is a lot better than I thought it was, but it's still pretty good. But remember, did not hit is the important thing. Hup. Uh, Oceanic Convergus, Atlantis Dolphin. <laughs> At the end of that, uh, choose a face down, face up. When this use place on G during a Vanguard attack, to pay the cost of you do, this unit gets plus 5k guard for every one of your rear guards uh, and if this unit's power guard is 30k or greater counter charge soul charge so the thing is is that let's look at this compared to its other two g guards like the g guards for this clan are shit this is pretty decent this is okay like this has certain combos with it that you want to do but um you know mm, it's better than some. Like, each of the G-Guards for Link Joker has a place, and each one is equally valid that you could argue for. This one, it's the best one there is for Novas, and that's not saying too much. Uh, and then Atlantis Dolphin. 
So you have it compared to Patriot, Enigma Patriot, uh, Excaravo, and Geo 5. Which I'm not, I don't need to do it for all of these things. But basically, this unit guard can easily hit 30k or greater. That's not really a problem. Uh, but the problem is, is that Enigma and Patriot, if it's if it's 20k or more, but not 30k, uh, you get plus 5k for a 31k block. If it's Excaravo, if it's 30k or greater, uh, you get plus 10k, so you hit 36. And then you can discard a card to hit plus 5k power until end of turn for a 40k defense. Uh, Geo 5 is a 30k guard for a soul blast provided you've taken the damage that turn. And then there's this guy who gives you more guard than any of them potentially, but it's just a counter blast, counter charge, soul charge. So I think that you'd run him at one in Grand Gallop decks or decks with heavy counter blast. But honestly, in Dykeiser or Metalborg, well, maybe not Metalborg so much, but the Dykeiser build especially, it's kind of a harsh, um, it's kind of a tough G zone to break into. And I don't know that there's enough room for you to be flipping over your own uh, G guards for something that you don't really need as much. Like, Dimensional Police, Dimensional Robos, like Zeal, I guess, uses Counterblast a lot. Grand Gallop can use Counterblast a lot sometimes. But it's, it's just not. You know, I don't really feel compelled to run him as much as I do this guy or this girl, kind of. Alright, so I'm going to put those away. Put this away. Let's talk about the Gear Chronicle uh, and the other Dark Zones. First up is Gear Chronicle, of course. Time Maiden of Eternity, Aluru. Auto, GB1, Counterblast 1. She's a face down, face up. When this unit is placed on Guardian Circle, pay the cost. If you do, this unit gets plus 5k for every face of card in your G-Zone until end of battle. This is a good G-Zone G uh, Guardian card. Uh, and it fights for among for a position among all the other good Guardians in Gear Chronicle. Um, there's Chrono Jet specific ones. There's generic ones. There's ones... There's, there's fucking... Um, the one that's basically denial Griffin, uh, except you choose which one that you you know you want to get rid of. Um, oh man, I can't remember it. But there's the Aluru other one, which puts two at the bottom of the deck of different grades. One's trigger, one's normal, and then there's the one that searches out a grade zero. Like so, this unit's pretty good, especially like hold on after every face of card in your G zone. So. Just on the turn that it shows up, it can give plus 10k. But after a turn, it'll be plus 15k. Let's be honest. It'll be plus 15k because you always run into Phoenix. Or something else that flips over another one. Plus 15. So then it'd be a 30k base. But then if it's if it's um, a gear groovy turn. Like, after a Gear Groovy turn, assuming that you haven't done an X-Age turn, that would be flipping over one and four. One, two, three, five, six, seven. Like, it would be, like, plus 35k or so. Like, it's... Think of it like this. Phoenix, next age. Gear Groovy, Ragnarok, next age. Flip up one for this. You know, that, that's the amount of guard you have. Six or seven. Anyway, the counter blast is a little bit annoying, but honestly, not that bad. Uh, then we have Terrible Linus. Now, I want you to remind you for these, by the way, for her, uh, Luru, it just sends a normal unit to the bottom of the deck, I think. Let me just see here. Yeah, choose a normal unit from the drop zone, put it at the bottom of the deck. There's no synergy here. You know, it's just, it's just two abilities that work the same way. Um, all the other ones, though, if they're paid for this, uh, they go into soul. So, that's the synergy. She's a face down, face up. For Terrible Linus, uh, when this is placed on G, pay the cost. Use one of your rear guards, put it into the soul, plus 10k until end of turn for every two open uh, circles. So if you have one and all of a sudden it's empty, well, guess what? That's um, plus 20k. But you never really need to do that. You'll always have one or like two or three cards left on your field. Uh, unless you run a full charge turn. Uh, so really, you know, he he's alright. But the thing is, the G-Guards for Spike Brothers, 
eh, like there's one that if you have a certain amount of open rear you get plus 5k which I think is the cheer girl one and then there's the juggernaut one I think yeah which gets like plus 15 and it does similar things to this like I don't know whether this guy's worth playing which is a pity uh, but plus 20k a potential plus 20k is all right I just like you probably want to run one or two especially like you want to run them by the way if you're running a uh, hellhard eight uh deck focus deck but i don't really think he, he's um he's all that good uh fortunately uh if you don't have any rear guards you still get the plus 20k card so that's that's good it's just something that you do and then you get the card that's how it works uh vincent like vincent price i hope he's handsome enough uh auto gb1 choose a face down face up when this unit is placed on guardian circle pay the cost if you do soul charge one which is a good skill and then get plus 5k for ever in every battle for every for every card five cards in the soul so let's say that we're playing sullivan which is what everyone wants to know about so automatically you get two cards in soul so you pay for sullivan's skill uh so let's say that you're at 15 you go up to 17 or let's say that you're at 13 actually you go up to 15 this guy gets plus 15k and plus 10k so plus 25k so that's a 40k guard for your skill which is pretty good pretty damn good then you soul blast him out and it's done like so this guy is actually worth playing the g zone for sullivan is actually pretty free because there's Let's assume that you're playing the best build, which is Enigmatic Assassin. You need a certain number of Tybalts. I would recommend like three or four, but you don't need to do that. Four Guild Array, one Shaharad, and at least one Demagogue. And then anything else is what you want, which leaves like two or three slots uh, for cards for this, fodder for this. That's how I do it, especially since the fact that he goes into Soul. If this guy didn't go into soul, I don't know if I'd be so positive about it. All right. By the way, that doesn't really affect Linus at all because he doesn't require any soul and there's no real mechanics about soul blasting except for Miracle and I think maybe Hellhard. Let me just check Hellhard real quick. Hellhard does not pay soul. Yeah, no, he actually soul charges like a motherfucker. So, <laughs> so, you know, yeah. And then we have Pale Moon, Kinesis, Megatrick, Cool Thard, uh, Auto, GB1, she's a face down G Guardian from the uh, G zone, turn it face up when this is placed on G. And if there are four more different uh, grades in your soul, uh, which would be zero, one, two, three, you may pay the cost. If you do, this unit gets plus 15K guard until end of battle. Um... Okay, so basically this guy goes on the field, checks for the four different grades, and if there is, you can flip something over and it gets plus 15k. That's actually not too bad. Uh, however, the thing is, it comes up against one bad one, which I don't even remember what the skill is. I think it calls out something to grade two. No. Uh, I can't remember what it does. There's Megatrick Furnival, which is top three, put one, put the rest in the put one into soul, the rest in the bottom of the deck. Then there's one that I can't really remember what it does, but it's it's just, I don't play it. Like, it is not playable to me. Maja, that's her name. And then uh, there's the new one that just came out, which I can't remember the name, but it's a rare G guard, uh, which calls out a grade two or something to the, yeah, it calls out a grade two to the field, and then it goes back into the end of turn. So basically get a get an interceptor for later in the game, which I play one of. Uh, and then there's this guy. Like, the fact that he goes into, uh, she'll, he'll go into soul is actually pretty good because it guarantees your zero. And I guarantee that also that you will have, like, a one and a two in there more than likely. But if your opponent's a dick and playing Denial Griffin and other cards that, like, fuck with your field uh, and prevents, like, things going back in, he could be pretty impossible. I would run him at one. The problem is, is that my G-Guard, my, um stride zone is actually pretty thin right now with these cards 
so I don't know if I have space to run them because Furnival's just pretty good. If you choose like a grade one or above, put it in the soul, you get plus 5k, so it's and like it just does too much. Like it's one of those things, like the besides the fact that Maja is terrible between Furnival, the new guy, and all the strides, you, I just I just don't know. However, he is playable. I will say that. And then my thing is because I play Millward and I play Mephisto. And then there's Harry and Farchild. Farfield. So there's two slots, I guess. That I could run cards like these. Hmm. You know, I could play him. I might play him. But the thing is, uh, hmm. He's one of those things you're, you're going to have to test. Like, I don't know how good he is because I have not tested him. However, I do know that, generally speaking, I do have all four grades. So he's, I think he's playable in the end. Uh, building up. I'll put Mega Calling at the bottom. <laughs> building up to my Megas. Woo! Ramblu. Negrino, uh, Negrinora. Otto, by the way, uh, before I forget, this... Oh, I already talked about that. Never mind. We're good. The symmetry between this and this. Negronora. Auto GB1. Soul Blast 1. She's a face down, face up. Uh, by the way. Do, do. <laughs> if you do choose two cards with different grades in the drop zone, and you may call it to G. So, you choose perfect shields that don't have to be called from hand. You choose a 10k shield and a uh, grade 2 10k shield that just requires GB1 to have plus 10k shield. Uh, so... <laughs> No one's going to play that. Shit. Fuck. No. Um, basically, it's a... All right, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to lay a plan. It's a grade zero or a perfect shield if you got it. Uh, as well as a grade two. You can choose... Uh, you do have to choose two different grades. So, you know, you'll overguard, I guess. <laughs> Which you should be doing for some of this stuff anyway. Especially if it doesn't affect your hand. Uh, but otherwise, this is this is just a good card. Uh, there's no real symmetry for this card unless you want to get a card like a perfect shield into the, um, which is a drop draw. By the way, all of these are drop draws. Uh, unless it's like you want to get a perfect shield into the drop zone, in which case there's no real symmetry. But it's a good card. Negronor is not bad at all. Then I run four. No, I don't run four. <laughs> Blessed Sparkle Sandy. Uh, GB1, choose face down, face up. When this unit is placed on G zone, pay the cost. If you do this unit, gets plus 5k in the battle for every two cards in your hand. I'm going to point it out. I play a, 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 a version of that called Drawpalooza, and I usually have 10 cards in my hand base. Like, <laughs> as soon as I hit my strides, I start, like, returning everything to hand and playing it back down and, and do whatnot. I don't even play draws, I don't think, anymore. Uh, and, like, I search out the great threes from the top five with Shizuku. Like, this isn't a problem. Top five, pay this, this for every two. So, like, plus 25, let's say. And then you may counter blast one. This unit gets plus 5k until end of battle. I guess they assume that this is going to be late game where you're going to have problems with hand. But I think that's an unrealistic expectation of my hand size. You fat shaming bitch. So we gotta be thin or something to use your counter blast? Nah, I'm gonna overguard. What's that for to pass? I'll make it five. <laughs> uh, the drop draw doesn't really have any synergy with this card. It's just a, an, an ability that is parallel to it. Honestly, I wouldn't use the drop draw too much because I have deck problems with this clan. Uh, great leader of sky and water, Ions. Iohans. Auto GB1, uh, Cannabis 1, she's a face up, face down. When this unit is placed on Guardian Circle, pay the cost. If you do, choose up to five rear guards until end of turn, they get continuous resist. And continuous, this unit cannot be hit, and plus 5k for each chosen unit. So that's. Thankfully, it says rear guard can't be hit. It does not say Vanguard can't be hit. Otherwise, we'd have problems. And this would be stupid. OP. Um. By the way, you can screw yourself over with this. If you decide to play this against Diablo, you have to be okay <laughs> with it not doing it. You might say, well, I got plus 25K. Oh, that's that's great. Uh, because I know that with Kahidan and uh, Hoel, 
they can hit a solid 45 51 i've seen 51 before because of all the three k's they give them them and each other you know it's it's pretty stupid how far this thing can go um but getting plus 25 that just puts you at 51k like which i said is a very possible number for a dedicated shadow paladin player to hit so it's it's this is pretty damn good however it doesn't give this resist which you know dimensional police but it also could prevent you having to pay the cost for various skills for various regards that you have which i think that happens otherwise though this is a pretty good g guard uh my g zone for uh aquas isn't that stringent so really he has like he doesn't really have much place in a mouth trim deck but you know in the thava deck almost yeah you got you got space Hup. By the way, the drop draw doesn't really do anything for this card. Mega, oh, not yet. Neo Nectar. Uh, Flower Princess of Cherry, Costarina. Auto, GB1, Kenna plus one, face down, face up. When this unit's placed on G, pay the cost. All right, let's keep going with the Neo Nectar G guard. So, skill is uh, GB1, auto, blah, blah, blah. Kenna plus one, flip over a copy. When this unit's placed on G until in a battle, this unit is, gets plus 5k, so it's 30k, 20k base uh, guard, so 31k. Uh, choose a card from hand called to rear guard. If you have two or more of the same card name as that called unit, plus 10k. And by the way, there's other skills that you can probably give out uh, defensive-wise. I think, can you give out to Marjuka? Maybe. I'll have to investigate the Marjuka connection for this one. Um, but if you do, that gets plus 10k. So it's basically boosts you to 30, 41, rather as well as any other skills that might be applied by somebody out of another unit. Not bad. Uh, does it work with uh, the Neonectar one? Where's the Neonectar one? Is it right here? Is it right? Is this it? No? Is it oh, there it is. Cherry Blossom? No, not really. However, if you have to call over something, it does. But I think, no, you can choose whichever skill because they're both autos. <laughs> Discarded in places happens about the same time as I understand it. So I'm putting that over there. Now I'm going to do the Great Nature one. Like there's not much to say about this card really. It just it just plays well. Oh, and by the way, in case you were wondering, like the two cherries are right here. See that it evolves into this. Damn. Well, be careful who you know. <laughs> this guy looked like. <laughs> this guy looks like this in high school. What he looks like now may surprise you. And it turns out he's just turned into some fucking <laughs> earrings. Sheltered heiress spangled. Anyway. Uh, auto is GB1, kind of last one. Uh, when this unit is placed on G, pay the cost. If you do choose any number of grade 3 or less guardians until end of battle, they get when this unit is retired from G, draw a card. This is pretty good in in the sense that it it gives you more hand advantage during your opponent's turn, uh, and it unflips damage. So ultimately, you're only playing a soul blast, provided of course you've used up a lot of counter blasts, which are a thing that happens in Great Nature. Uh, and the fact that it lets you draw like there's a difference between drawing a card in your turn and on your opponent's turn. If you can draw cards on your opponent's turn, it's actually better than drawing cards on your turn, for the simple fact that you can guard more of them. But Drawing on your team means you can do more things with them. Like, that's the exchange. So that's one of the things that makes Great Nature strong is its defense. And I think this helps out quite a bit, in fact. Especially if you use it late game. Would I run more than one? No. But I would run it. Finally, Mega Colony. Oh boy, I've been looking forward to this. Uh, GB1, face down, face up. Uh, when this unit is placed on Guardian Circle during a battle, the va opponent's vanguard attacked, pay the cost. If you do, your opponent chooses two of his or her rear guards, and he or she may tap them. If he or she does not tap them, you can counter charge. You can draw a card, counter charge, and soul charge. So, let's talk about this card for a second. First off, it does have synergy with this one, in the sense that you drop draw, which can help Mega Colony uh, get rid of some bad draws when it comes to like draw triggers and stuff like that, and then hopefully get something that works better with them. But it also like say a grade three that you need to strike with. <laughs> uh, but also it works with this card in the sense of fucking no, it doesn't. I don't know what the fuck I'm talking about. Shit. Anyway, uh, 
<laughs> the reason why it works with this card is that it just works the entire way. Instead of having bad cards in hand, you can also, all, like 5k guards and all that jazz, you can turn them into 10k guards, perfect shields, just anything that you need later. I'm going to be quite bl uh, blunt with Mega Colony. Like, you should be able to guard whatever the fuck the opponent does, either by nick nipping it in the butt with Dark Face or other stun skills, or by just having the guard, because you tap their shit. You know, it's... Uh, previously, you know, it's, it's probably not a big problem. The thing is, the opponent choosing to give you advantage and i'm gonna be clear you win either way you're like but it doesn't give you any guard true it's true it is you are making a true statement but the thing is is that it gives you more cards it unflips damage which it like if you've been obturand it you know how hard it is for mega colony to unflip damage it's perfs and it's one grade one that goes from hand to field into the soul. That's it. <laughs> you might say, well, what about that sand trigger? Hand to field into the soul. It's still a minus one from hand for no other benefit than to unflip damage. Well, it keeps a grade one from unflipping. Nope. There's very few Amber clone clones running around these days. And Aqua Force runs resist. You know, it's Makeup Widow is not a good card shouldn't play it too well too much it's the same thing as earth dreamer it has a place but i think that place is the trash other people may disagree that's fine but you don't gain power enough for stands except with tarantis but we'll talk about that the fact is is that you want your opponent to draw to get rid of a thing if they tap two that means that they you lost at least two stages of guard from something if it's the Vanguard booster and a grade one behind uh, a grade two in the front row, that means that if, unless that grade two can hit like 11k or better, you don't have to guard this unless you get triggers. If this guards this, you know, you, like assuming this is for Vanguard, let's say that they uh, do an entire column. You don't have to guard that column. Let's say that they do, do Vanguard first. You play this card, they tap their two boosters. That's 5k less shield, 10k less shield, uh, no, yeah, 5k less guaranteed shield on each one because if you think about it from 18 to 11 is 5k shield which actually may depend on what you want to do for this because if you want to keep 5k shields to deal with that you know hey but if you know your opponent is um weak and can't attack too much well drop and draw all you want because it sets up for the legion later because you're playing the legion right you know you're playing the very good legion and if they do, if they don't tap it, you get a counter, black, counter charge, which means that you can pay for Dark Face or Obturandus more than likely, which is gets you later on advantages, or uh, and a Soul Charge, which pays for Dark Face. Let's say that I'm facing a Gear Chronicle player, and I slap two of these down to block a Vanguard attack. And by the way, I am considering running six G-Guards, just for this bitch. Uh... And let's say they don't have the ability to tap it, or if they do have, if they do tap it, it ruins all their combos. Well then, that's two draws. That's two counter charges. That's two soul charges. You know what those two soldier charges will do? Oh, looks like they're playing a melum. Soul blast two. Tap the melum. Shuts it down. They also works on Tachikaze, on uh, gold paladins, on royal paladins, on any number of things. Just by playing this card, you can set up some stuff. Even if you just play one. Soul Charge. You are you have one card in soul because that's how Dark Face works. It gives you soul stuff, but it doesn't give you the ability to make use of the advantages. <laughs> it's, it's great. Uh, you know, it's not like any soul charging we do. is is basically a minus one to hand somehow. Uh, and don't say Machining Mosquito. Machining Mosquito is, is shit. It doesn't do anything else but get you a soul charge. And then it's there it's a 7k booster like there's cards that do 7k boosting better uh like um vulcan laferty but basically as soon as you hit those two soul all of a sudden you become a threat gb1 flip something over you're at gb2 oh they're in the middle of using skills to summon stuff out oh that's just, just fantastic <laughs> nothing bad's gonna happen here 
Anyway, that's why I like this car. That's why I think it's good. Uh, I am, you know, I'm going to be messing around with my G-Zone for uh, Mega Colony, and I might just have to get rid of Stun Beetle. Uh, just so I can play a couple of these and uh, uh, Tarantus without hurting my Paraspheres. Because I need those Paraspheres. Yes, I do. I love Paraspheres. I uh, hope you do, too. All right. So I'm uh, going to use a segue of uh, my usual rambling style to go into the GRs. Ice, ice, baby. I guess what do I want? Quick poll. Is it this one? I can't hear you guys. <laughs> it's the show's big lie. I've never been able to hear you. <sighs> you guys remember that robot chicken sketch? It was hilarious. Dora the Explorer's uh, quinceanera. She gets drunk and she goes, "I Should I jump into the pool from the top of the building? And she goes, I can't hear you. Stops for a second, starts weeping. I can never hear you. It's the show's big lie. And then she jumps and misses the pool from like three stories. Gruesome, but it's robot chicken. Anyway. So, Genesis. Goddess of Settlement, Palace Athena. Uh, Auto, Vanguard, GEB8. By the way, I'm not going to give too many opinions on these cards uh, until the next video, which is ratings. Uh, of how, how good these things are. When this unit attacks a Vanguard, Soul Blast any number of cards. I will say how to use these in decks, though. Uh, all of your rearguards get plus 2k until end of turn for each Soul Blasted card. If you Soul Blast three or more cards, this gets plus 10k in a crit. There's no Genesis deck where this doesn't work. I'll just say it like that. Um, Regalia has a bunch of Soul Blast skills that do go off that can power up the Vanguard and give you all kinds of abilities. Not that they'll ever let it hit. Uh, but it does make it so that it's harder for them to G-guard, so it's perfect shield or fuck off, you know, sort of thing. Um, as well as cards that work for uh, Fenrir and others that when they Soul Blast, they do get skills or they give out power. You know, there's a lot of things that you can do with this card. It's, it's incredibly useful. It might even be good. Uh, Celtus Winner. Uh, GB8 Unite. Oh, that's my phone. Uh, when this unit attacks, choose up to four rearguards. Until end of turn, they get auto rearguard. At the end of battle, this unit attacked or boosted. Look at top two. Choose a card from among them. Call them to rearguard plus 5k and put a card from among them on the deck. So, a lot of people are confused about whether this is good or not. I say it's okay. Uh, for the simple reason is that it replaces columns. Like, that. that's what you're doing. Um... You have a full field because you're playing gold paladins. You give out the skills. And by the way, it might be hard to hit Unite in this late in the game. But we're assuming you can. It's not that hard, actually. Uh, because you basically go Gurguit, uh, Gurguit. Um, uh, I assume you G-Guard sometime in there. And uh, oh, what's the name of it? Raining Dragon. Glorious Raining Dragon. And then you're at GB8 with the uh, G-Guard. Like, it's, it's not that hard. And that assumes you don't like Gurgwit again in the middle of it with the uh, GR. Anyway, so... Let's say that you find your your top two. You, you attack with one column. Top two. After the attack. Um, you get... Uh, Canarius. And a perfect shield. Or a heal trigger, or whatever. Put the heal trigger bomb, Canarius. Don't use Canarius as skill. Do the second one. Put it. Look at top two. It's a big booster. It's a seven K booster. Uh, it's a Jeffrey. There we go. Put the Jeffrey down. Plus five K. So it's twenty six thirty K. Uh, thirty twenty nine. No, it's a thirty K base attacking uh, to your vanguard. You do it again on the other one. This time you get a Henry. So you attack with this column again. So you attack twice with one column. You go over to this column. Let's say you get a Henrius and then a Can another Canarius. You pull the Henrius here, use the skill, get a booster. Canarius here, discard a card, top three, get something. 
Like that's how you do it. Like that's why it's good. Sure, you don't get the power, but late this late in the game, they're going to be at five, or they're going to hope to get a fifth damage trigger. Like that's that's what it is. Uh, that's how you use it. Like there's no special card skills that I can really talk about. It's just do your gold paladin thing this late in the game. Now I've actually seen people with Gurgwit start to deck out more often. I don't like Gurgwit. So I'm fine with that. But if they somehow manage to avoid decking out, that's it. And people say, well, you just run uh, the one guy gives plus 5k to things to summon out. Sure, you can do that. But remember, that's all he does. This does something more. This gives you five attacks at least. And then the scenario I described, that's seven attacks. Yeah, so Vanguard, this, 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 this. Yeah. No? Sorry, Vanguard. One, two, three, four, five. So six. It's one, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah, it's six attacks at least. You know, that's, that's how it is. And if you run Quill, you can hit more. Yeah, um, yeah you can actually hit a lot more. If you run Quill right. So, you know, this guy's a lot better than people think. Amaterasu. Chief Deity of the Heavens, Amaterasu. Act Vanguard, once per turn, GB8. Look at Counterblast 1, look at top 5 from the top of the deck, choose 3, put them into hand, and put each of the rest at the top of the bottom of the deck in any order. So, in other words, let's say you get 3 triggers and 2 things you want in your hand. Put the 3 triggers uh, on the top of the deck before you attack. Uh, on the top of the deck, because it's an act. It's the main phase. You can just go for it. Until end of turn, the unit gets auto, oracle. When your drive check reveals a trigger unit, all the units in the front row get plus 5k. So this is the card they really needed in their support set uh, in Trinity Dragon. But this is what they got. But here's the thing. Not only is it plus 5k to the front row, it's also another plus 5k that you can give out anywhere. So if they two pass you, now it would be super dumb not to just perfect. If you don't prefer, like, or if you try for, like, anything less than a, than a, uh, no pass, you're probably begging to lose. But, anyway. And by the way, you'll have Oracle. Uh, Black Seraph Vlader Terminal. Rescue, Auto Vanguard, GB8. When this unit attacks a Vanguard, all the units in the front row get plus 2k for every card in your damage zone until end of turn. That's probably going to be 10k this late in the game. Choose up to 5 cards from your damage zone, heal them, and then for every... Basically, you rescue 5. So, I mean, that's an Angel Feather GB8. Uh, keep in mind that a lot of these cards put you at risk of deck out. And when I assess each of these cards in the next video, I will be taking that into account. Urgan Vert. Uh, Dark Knight Urganvert. I love the name, though. However, you know, those, uh, those Bermuda cards that require Vert. And, and <laughs> no, they're mostly prisms, I think. Uh, Act Vanguard once per turn. By the way, you see these, these, these things, like it's either on attack or once per turn or something like that, you know. Anyway. Uh, GB1 Counterblast 1. Choose five rear guards and retire them. Search your deck for the same number of grade one or less cards called in the separate rear guard circles, and they get... Same number of grade one or less cards as the number of units retired. Call them the separate rearguard circles and they get plus 15. And choose the same number of your opponent's rearguards as the number of calls. Retire them and shuffle your deck. So, that's a bit of a bitch, uh, the retire thing, uh, for the opponent anyway. But uh, this is actually, this this does what Shadow Paladins, it's just Shadow Paladins. Like, it, it's, it's, it's hard for me to say anything other than, it's Shadow Paladins. It does Shadow Paladin things. The Shadow Paladin guy goes to the Shadow Paladin store, buys the Shadow Paladin things, comes back with those Shadow Paladin things after murdering its own children. Um, yeah, not much. Not much else to him. Not much else to him. Uh, Avalon. Got three of them. Uh, Divine Knight of Condensed Light. Obius. Obius. Ab Avalon. Uh, auto Vanguard GB8, Cannabis 1, this unit attacks a Vanguard, pay the cost, search your deck for 5 cards, call them the separate rearguard circles, until end of turn they get plus 4k, and this unit gets a crit. Shuffle your deck. So, in the latest set, some cards came out that work on each other when they come into play. 
There are also cards that um, take care of Alfred, like Paris and all that jazz, to get all kinds of power. You see where I'm going with this? Like, th this is also like the same sort of thing with this. This is a Royal Paladin GB8. It does Royal Paladin things, goes to the Royal Paladin source. Except of ch killing its children, it, it gives them, you know, ice cream on the way. Uh, and the crit is just icing on the cake. This should have gotten a crit, but it didn't. That's Royals done. Ah. Uh, Hook. Hook. Alright, we're good. Uh, Conquering Supreme Dragon, Closer Dragon. Uh, so this, this is, this is exactly what Narukami needed. Auto, GB8, when this unit is placed on Vanguard, retire all rearguards of all fighters, find all of your opponent's drop zone face up, and until in turn this unit gets continuous, all your units get plus 2k for each card your fighters bind zones. Confirmed dungaree support. Tell me I'm wrong. Tell me that this does not work with Dungaree. Um, because Dungaree creates its own bind zone. Uh, that, you know, in case in case there's any noobs watching this, that's, that's what I'm referencing. Um, <laughs> so the uh, Retire All Rearguards of All Fighters is kind of a bitch, but there are cards that affect this uh, and prevent you from retiring it based on the name of the Vanguard. Uh, so, you know, if you play the, um, the deck with... Uh, Oh, what is it? Detonic's Dragon? Like, you can say, this cannot... The, the, they have several cards that say, well, one card and I think another one. Is that an Eradicator? Anyway. Point is, is that they have cards with the ability that says, this cannot be retired. I know Eradicators have a card that is, when this unit is retired, top three, choose a card, put it into your hand. You know, this... There's a whole bunch of ways you can use that to your advantage and or nullify it. So that's not really a cost. Don't worry about that. All of your units get plus 2k for every fighter's bind zone. <sighs> That's like, okay, I'm not going to lie. There should be like 20, this late in the game for Narukami, there might be as many as 20 cards in your opponent's bind, uh, drop zone. Not counting the bind zone. If you, let's say that, that you bind, you're very good about binding their drop zone. So in other words, they have five cards in drop zone. There's probably like two or three cards in there. Then this... By the way, this is place on Vanguard. Then, like all the cards that they just died, like the five cards that died because you're facing Gold Paladins, as well as the 16 or so cards, in, <laughs> no, along with the six or so cards there. So that's plus 11, plus 22 in there. Let's say that you're actually doing pretty well and you're at Thunderstrike 8 or something. You know, that's, that's pretty good. That's going to be good. Thunderstrike 19 plus 38 to all your rearguards. I think this should be more expensive than it is, honestly. But we'll see how it is. Problem is, Narukami goes in fits and pieces. I think we're going to see a bunch of these cards in the next um, series of tournaments for America, especially since we play different than Japan. Um, hey, Ash, do you think these cards made a real difference in Japan? The GB8s? Hmm. And apparently, it's, uh, the jury's still out for a lot of this stuff. Either way. The next one is Blazing Flare, uh, sorry, Blazing Burst, uh, Dragon, uh, Auto Vanguard GB8. When this unit attacks a Vanguard, retire all your opponent's rearguards, and all your rearguards get plus 10k. If three or more units retired, this gets plus 10k in a crit. A lot of people hate on this card, I don't see it. This is a free wipe the board of your opponent, as well as give power. Plus 10k until end of turn is nothing to sneeze at. So, like, let's say that, um... We're sw swinging at, uh, sorry, 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 a 16k column becomes a uh, 36k column. There are cards in Kagro that during uh, any phase of the game, get pl or during your turn or something like that, get plus, get plus 5k for everything that's killed. Combo them up. Make it happen. With the new stuff that comes out, Ziegenwilder or whatever his name is, he goes, like... He brings you the GB3 at the end of this turn. You do it again, because there's no reason not to do him again. You're at GB6. You G-guard again. So you've already G-guarded once. You G-guard again to get Zegan Wilder on your first stride. You know, that's GB8. 
you know, it's 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 GV8, you know, and you can use him, wipe the field, because you know, gold paladins are, are kind of the bitch in this in this in this in this set. You know, you give out plus ten case. You give out plus five case for everything retired. If it's if plus twenty five K to rear guards, even if that rear guard's just a five K motherfucker, is good. I'm actually considering running a deck based around getting him as fast as possible, getting Zegan Wilder as fast as possible, just so I can run him and kick people in the teeth with him because it will amuse me. Also, the benefit is he's free. Like, when this unit attacks, kill things, kill three things, you don't have to run Blade Master skill, you don't have to use any skills to kill things. Like, it kills things, and then it gets blazing. 420, blaze it. So, here's one of the more interesting cards in this set. Uh, Ambush Stealth Dragon Mandala Ryo. Mandala Lord Support confirmed. Act Vanguard once per turn. GBA, choose two cards from the drop zone, return them to the deck. Uh, choose your choose. Search your deck for two cards, same card name. By the way, you should choose the two the cards. You know, put them. Anyway, uh, search your deck for two cards, same card name as uh, as this unit. In other words, the heart card, uh, and call them the separate rear guards. Until in the turn, they get shadow stitch auto rear guard. Choose three cards from hand to discard them. End of battle. That your vanguard attack. If it did not hit, pay the cost. Move this unit stood to your vanguard. Shuffle to your deck. So I'm not gonna lie. I hmm. I don't think it actually. I think it doesn't lose trigger power if it moves. It might. Uh, if people know in the comments, do tell me whether or not things lose trigger power when they move. So, in other words, because I recall with Pelinor, when it moved from here to here, it retained its trigger power. At least that's what I was told. Like, if you gave it triggers or something, not triggers, like if you ran uh, a card that lets it go to the Vanguard and you gave it power when it came out, it kept that power. Now, that's just what I was told. Um, and if that's the case, I think that you could basically run triggers, put them on here, put them on there, make sure it hits like 16K or so, so that it, when it swings, it's more than just a 10K2 pass. Because that's what the danger is for this card. However, this card is fantastic. Shuffle your deck. Um, you can even, if you know you have like two copies of the Vanguard in the deck, just put two triggers in there. Because this isn't two normal cards. Just put two triggers in there and then bam. How much else to say? Rikudo Self Dragon Roku Shirikan. Uh, Auto Vanguard GB8. When your Vanguard's unit is placed on G from hand, pay the cost. Counter Blast. You may Counter Blast or Soul Blast. If you do, your opponent chooses two cards from his or her hand and discards them. So the way this works is that this interferes with perfect shields. Uh, as well as Screw You and Quintet Walls and just about anything else. If they have one card in hand and they're done, you know, they pull, throw down that purple shield, well, too bad. Uh, yeah. That's, there's not much else for it. The problem with Nubatama is that there are very few ways to get the GBA quickly, except through the usual uh, G guards. Uh, a Tiger Lord, I think, is the only one that really hits for um, two strides uh, because it flips over a copy of itself. I don't think any of the other ones do except for the new stuff that's coming out in set 11 in August. Vulcan Toronto Engorge, Auto Vanguard GB8. When your rearguard is retired and you can retire him for himself, choose up to one of your opponent's rearguard, retires it, and choose your rearguard, choose one of your rearguards, this unit and that unit get plus 10k. So there's multiple ways to do this. One is to play it safe and conserve resources until you hit GB8 with Tachikaze. Or you can really go balls deep with uh, various Gaia supports and Tank Mammoths and other things like that. And then basically you re-summon things out. Out of curiosity, let's say you Engorge. Actually, yeah, because Engorge comes before um, this skill. So you engorge, kill Tank Mammoth. You use Tank Mammoth skill, comes back. Because it's on retire. When this unit is retired, summon it back out. So you swing with a 21k Tank Mammoth. If I'm wrong and the order of operations is off, tell me. But the engorge skill is not connected to this skill, so there should be floating this skill and Tank Mammoth skill from being retired. Which means that Tank Mammoth can come back plus 3k. Now, I'm not going to say that you'll have the resources for it, but that's a conversation for when I rate these cards. Uh, sure, I'll do, I'll do, uh, Dark Zone now. Two, draw Kimberly. 
Uh, auto Vanguard GB8. When this unit attacks a Vanguard, choose five cards from Soul. Call them the separate rearguards. And until end of turn, they get plus 5k and they are considered Abyss Dragons. And then until end of battle, they get uh, this unit, Auto Vanguard. This unit gets plus 10k for every Abyss Vanguard. Uh, for every abyss dragon on your rear guard, so I, I should have checked out how many abyss dragons are in Pale Moon. I don't think there's too many uh, playable, uh, but then actually summoning out an entire field with this, plus the advantage I could get with like Happiness Collector, is makes this a, actually a really strong card. I think I'll be taking out one of my cards for this. I'm not sure what though. I know I've got two slots for it, but. Like, because I run four Millward, four Mephisto, one Fairchild, one um, uh, Harry. And then I've got two slots, and I can't remember what they're for or even if they're worth playing. So I could place one in here and then one of my new G guards. So yeah, I like the art too. Uh, Rootland Betray. Uh, continuous Vanguard GB8. All units in the front row get plus 3k in the crit for every 13 cards in soul. Now, Amon might make it this far, but I don't know. Uh, or have more than 13 cards in soul, like 26. Uh, I'd be impressed if Ammon does, but I don't know. Uh, I'll talk about him. I don't have a high opinion of him, though. Uh, Hellhard 8. Just a second. When your unit attacks... By the way, it's not this unit, by, by the way. It's it's when your unit attacks. Uh, choose one of your units until it gets plus 10k and auto rearguard. Choose this unit and a card from your hand and put them into the soul. At the end of the battle, if this unit attacked or boosted, you may pay the cost. If you do, search your deck for one card. Call it to open rearguard, shuffle your deck. So there is a card that restands every single time something with um, charge is placed in front of it. Now, there's also a card that... Soul Blast 1, kill anything that isn't a, a G4 Guardian. Um, and it gets plus 10k when it attacks. So it's 26k, uh, and they can kill anything that isn't a Perfect Shield or a G Guard. And they can kill Perfect Shield, they just can't get rid of the ability. So you see the where the symmetry is, and you might see how, how this might interact with it. I'm not going to say whether it's good or bad. But I am going to say that within Spike Brothers, this is exactly what we needed. Interdimensional Dragon, Beyond Order Dragon. Act Vanguard, once per turn, GB8. Count of Blast 1, Soul Blast 1, bind 8 cards from the top of the deck. Face up. Now this is during the main phase. Uh, after the original battle phase of this turn, you may perform an additional main phase and battle phase. Until end of turn, this unit gets auto, Vanguard, at the beginning of your main phase, stand this unit, and it gets minus 1 drive check. Uh, so it does say perform the end phase after the additional phase. So you don't skip the end phase at all. It's just later. Now there are some problems with this card, namely that some players might blow their, uh, abilities early on, but if you play it smart, you can actually like get multiple things going off, especially if you play stands or something like that, or, uh, run history maker, you know, but save the ability. Now there are ways to counter this card, uh, and namely is deck them out, but... <laughs> But honestly, this is a pretty, pretty dang good card. A good flagship card for the set. Which is what it is. Uh, since these are close to hand. Genesis Machine De Machine Deity Altwilder. Uh, looks more Link Joker than Messiah, if you get me. Act Vanguard once per turn, GB8. Cannabis 1, choose two cards from your hand, discard them. Choose one of your opponent's rearguard for each card for his and her damage zone. The opponent chooses a card from his or her hand and puts that on rearguard as a lock card. That's a Cannon Blast 1, discard 2 for a minus 5 to your opponent. Because this late in the game, they probably have 5 damage. Uh, and it's not even open rearguard. Oh, no, it is. Sorry. Choose up to one of your opponent's open rearguard for each card in his or her damage zone. Now, that does put a damper into it, and I'm going to have an opinion about it uh, in the next video. That might not be popular. Yeah, I'm going to talk about this card later. Like, cause there's, there's precedent I want to talk about and stuff like that. This is a card worth talking about, but anyway, Die King. Oh baby. This is, this is the chief card of this set. I, I tell you what, for me, 
Uh, auto, Vanguard, GB8, except for Tarantus. <laughs> oh, no. Uh, oh, when this unit attacks a Vanguard, this gets plus 10k and a crit for every rearguard until end of battle. In the battle, this unit's power is 80k or greater. All your opponent's rearguards get plus 10k for every crit it has until end of turn. So, I'm gonna be, I'm gonna be real clear. It's super easy to get this guy to 80k. And it's super easy for D-Police to have five rearguards. Unless they played some bullshit with, with Diehawk and a few other things, you're probably going to have the cards in field for this guy to hit 80k. And all you need is, is another plus 4k. And then... All your rearguards. So, and then you get plus 5 crits. That means that there's 60k to give out to every single rearguard on your field. Woo! So, yeah, technically, yeah, this guy just wipes people. Um, he just he just does. Like, it's perfect shield or nothing. And then I hope that you can take two damage. And he didn't get crits. Like, there's not much else to say about this card uh, without just basically going into the ratings video. Huh, Fang Dragon King Fist Dragger. I am mediocre to this card. Auto, Vanguard, GB8, Cannonblast 1. When this unit attacks a Vanguard, pay the cost, stand all rearguards. And until end of turn, they get auto rearguard once per turn. When this unit taps, stand this unit. And uh, this unit gets re 5k for every rearguard. Like, they, this is a tryhard card. Not in the sense of, like, using it, but in the sense of what Blizzard did. Um, Blizzard. Bushy Road, Bushy did to this card. All it is, is something that gets beefy. And it, it makes other rearguards attack you multiple times. That's all it does. That's all Nova Grapplers is. Good. Um, this I think this card focuses best in a Victor build with um, those guys, Sazanda and uh, Sever Temper. Not with any of the other skills that give out skills, except to real, be real brutal early. Uh, this is just uh, basically for a re for a, a tired Nova Grappler player who can't cinch the win, much like how Victor is, except less costly. This is less costly than Victor, and I think this is why I might... I don't know. I'll talk about it in a bit. In the other video, which I keep referencing, Unfading Ship, Immortal Galleon. Auto, GB8. When this unit is placed on Vanguard, choose five cards from the drop zone column to separate rearguards, plus 10k until end of turn, and then retire those units at the end of it. Wow, what a good card. It is exactly what Grand Blue wants. It goes to the Grand Blue store, and it resurrects its children and accidentally killed back from the dead. Um, and then kills them again. Uh, I don't, like, it, it, it's, you get, do you guys remember that one double rare from, like, set two? The Mega Blast unit, Mega Blast, fill your field up from the drop zone. This is what this guy does with, like, you can compare that to this, and this is the power creep. <laughs> you know, like, the, the, this is a power creep measurement card. Like, from, uh, I can't remember what his name is, to this. Yep. Good job, Bushy Road. You make us proud. Uh, festive Finale, Final Priscilla. Uh, Auto Vanguard GB8, choose a card from your hand, discard it, in the which isn't a problem. Uh, in the battle of this unit, attack to Vanguard, pay the cost. If you do, return all your rearguards to hand. Choose five cards from your hand, call them the separate rearguards, plus 5k. And that's that's pretty good. That's basically what Bermuda wants. Again, it's one of those things that goes to the Bermuda store, and it uh, exchanges its children, as as it horrifyingly needs them. Uh, so, yeah. I mean, it's exactly what it needs to be. Uh... Honestly, once we saw the English translation, a lot of these cards are turning out better than they did before. Now, this one's going to be a, a time and a half to describe. Last Twister Dragon. Blue Swirl Martial Dragon. It should have been a Blue Storm, but hey, who cares? Act Vanguard. Once per turn, GB8. Counterblast 1. When this unit gets, auto. <laughs> auto. Wave second or fourth time. When your rearguard attacks, that unit gets plus 5k. And at the end of battle, look at four cards... Call a car among them to, card among them to rear guard all, uh, of that. So, in other words, copy it over. And if the card call, call, called card had wave, that unit and this unit get plus uh, 5k until a battle. Shuffle your deck. 
So that happens at the second and fourth uh, times. Uh, so what combos can you do? Simply put, there's one that gets Soul Blast 1 for every... I think Soul Blast 1 and it gets plus 4k for every attack or for every wave unit and stuff like that. And that's what makes this card good. Um, in certain situations. We'll talk. <laughs> so, Lindros... Lindros? Yeah, Lindros Premier. Auto, Vanguard. And that's, that's all the ones for it. Auto Vanguard GB8, choose three unit normal units from the drop zone, return them to the deck. When this unit attacks a Vanguard, choose one of your units, search for three copies, uh, call them the separate rearguards, and uh, the units called with this effect get plus 10k for each called until end of turn shuffle deck. So, green shot elf. So, Noel. Oh well. Noel? Yeah, Noel. So, yeah, I mean, I'm not going to go on for this, but basically, that's what you're talking about. Those are the cards you search out for. Uh, and then, and that's how it works. Like there's not much for it, uh, to me to talk about. It's just combos, 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 combo, combos, uh, combos, 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 combos. Everybody combos, 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 combos. Immortality professor, Shahasara Vera, which is an Indian sounding name to me. Act Vanguard GBA, two, two cards from your hand and discard them. Choose five rear guards up to five. And until end of turn, they get 10k, and at the end of turn, retire this unit. And if the number of cards in your hand is one or less, this unit gets plus 40k in a crit. So, 66k crit, too. Um, basically, it's designed to be, like, the end game. It's like, okay, this is it. And then, it's not it, because you just draw a whole bunch of cards to hand because you run Crayon Tiger. Um... But the one card in hand is a little bit weird. And the choose two cards and discard them is a little bit weird for this card. But that's okay. It's not bad at all. In fact, it's it's a pretty much guaranteed to be a one-off. Uh, Suppression Mutant Deity, Tyrantus. Continuous Vanguard, GB8. All of your opponent's Vanguards and Rearguards lose their auto abilities. Screw you, Gurguit. Uh, and cannot intercept. Screw you, Gurguit. <laughs> and all of your units get plus 5k. Um... Until, sorry, for each of your opponents tap Vanguard from regards. So what does that, what does that mean? Uh, so, let's say that you've had, you have two 11k attackers in the front row and your Vanguard. Uh, and your opponent is a Legion for some ungodly reason, Alfred build, with set five rearguards. That's plus 35k because the Legion counts as two to each rearguard for a 46k rearguard columns. Um, and by the way, he gets that power too. So, you know, that's plus 35k to him. So that's 61k to Vanguard. Boop. 46k to Vanguard, you know. 51 crit 2 to Vanguard, you know, that that's that's what we're dealing with. This is a similar thing to Die King. It's in the same vein. And it's really what Mega Colony needed. I just wish it neglected, uh, negated triggers and stuff, but it doesn't need to do that, really. Or, um, things like, so, like, this is a continuous, like, I, I, it's, it's hard to talk about this too much, but basically it's a continuous. Let's say that somebody hetero-rounded your, uh, one of your stood rearguards, right? You summon out whatever the fuck. You place it there, it still gets plus 35k. Let's say just plus 30k. I don't know why they're legioning. Let's say, let's say it's just a 7k booster. You put it here. 37k to Vanguard. Like, that's that's how it works. It's a, it's, I'm going to say this. It, it's the best card Mega Colony could have gotten, but it could have gotten better. Like, they're scared of making Mega Colony good, and I don't know why. Like, will it ruin the meta? Is it just because they're afraid that there's no money in it? I mean, they're right. They're right. But... Still, though, a mega colony meta. It's the dream. All right, guys. Uh, so I've covered everything here that I want to cover for these cards. I'm going to make a ratings video uh, just because, like, I'm not going to do this for all the sets, but I am doing it for this one because it is, it is important uh, for a lot of things, as well as for people who are kind of confused as to how, how to handle it, uh, these cards. Fortunately, we have all the time in the world to do this. 
Uh, so I'm going to let you guys go. Be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. IYG, imagine your goddess. This is Zulia, the Mercenary King, signing out. Well, guys, did you know that Imagine Your Goddess has its own web store? Check out all the neat merchandise, ball scrolls, play mats. Don't forget about the acrylics and the other goodies. Oh, Helen. Yeah, I'm here. Get them in store at the Stand Up Series, or check us out online at our website, shopiyg.com. We're always adding new stuff. Imagine, Imagine Your, your Goddess. goddess.